Hi everybody, happy Monday. Uh, you may see that, yeah, you can see some of it. My skin's a bit rough right now, very rough. Uh, you can especially see it down here. Ugh. I don't know why my skin just exploded the other day. Um, these things bother me because it's itchy. But, uh, and then I've got this potential ingrown eyelash that I'm hoping doesn't explode into a horror that looks a bit like, you know, one of those crawling, like, oozes in Hollow Knight. Um, if, if that does happen, I will be taking a break from doing videos. I will do audio only if it becomes a horror show, warning you in advance. Uh, if you enjoy insider stuff like this, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. This video is going to be a cross-section of, uh, politics and gaming. It's, it's about gaming, but it's going to deal with some political themes, so it may get demonetized. I never know anymore. So Patreon helps a lot. Also, uh, you get to see uh, uh, lots of cat videos and insider stuff and silliness and boss fight previews and all that stuff. Zelda's uh, co-piloting today, right, Zelly Belly? She's right out. Um, but what I'm talking about today, and I, I went back and forth about talking about this because it started on a website I do not consider a quality source. So I'm not going to name it and I'm not going to talk about the original article, just the topic, which is something I've talked about before. Um, but I, I do have, I, I am pretty stringent. Some of you know, it's driven some of you nuts that uh, if I don't consider something a reliable source, I don't use it. I don't um, give it attention. And I will say that is not a reliable source. Uh, now, that doesn't mean sometimes unreliable sources are not right. It just means that I do not have enough um, confidence in it to use it and, and promote it through my YouTube channel. Um, but the question came up about whether there are cliques in game journalism. And of course, not content to let it lie, uh, some people decided to announce how silly that whole thing was. And, and some of them I know are some of the clique leaders, um, they, certain people who responded to that have been utterly horrendous to people I know, like serious psychological warfare, nasty stuff. Um, now, in those cases, it wasn't like political affiliation type stuff. They're just rotten people who need to triangulate anybody even remotely competent or knowledgeable. And that that's, that's the core that's one of the cores of the cliquey, um, the cliquey elements of games journalism. I hate using journalism because it's mostly op-ed, right? Um, but people who write on websites about video games. Now, um, it is known that Certain sites like Kotaku and Polygon are owned by parent companies like Vox that have a clear uh, left-wing slant and are rumored to be funded at least partially by... Well, Kotaku's not anymore. Um, Kotaku uh, is now owned by uh, Univision? But Kotaku's not anymore. But Vox, there's, there's rumors about them being funded by left-wing dark money. Uh, I, I have not been able to confirm this yet, but the rumors that will not go away. Um, but that's not really that kind of political conspiracy is not where I come down on why is games writing so cliquey. It's a much simpler, much more personal element because let's face it, if that clique, if like the, the, you know, left wing fly the flag, look at how great we are, clique, was really in charge. 
as of, you know, 2012, when things really started getting weird in gaming after a, a period of, I maintain, having worked all the way through it about 10 years of steady progress, um, if, if those, if, if the left wing woke brigade was really in charge, you would see a lot more women and, um, black and brown people and even more Asian people. What is it? API now is the term, Asian Pacific Islander. Um, you would see a lot more people like that writing about video games because they're, they're much more represented across the left-wing spectrum in pretty much every other field. Um, but not in gaming. Gaming is still um, predominantly white, cisgendered, and male. There's gay representation. There's some trans representation. But most of them are white, too. Um, um, I can't, Off the top of my head, can someone please tell me if there's any trans men writing about gaming. I know a bunch of trans women writing about gaming, but trans men, I'm not sure, but I can't think of one. Maybe there is one and, and, and somebody can tell me about that. Um, but, uh, you know, there has not been a marked improvement of representation in op-ed when it comes to video games. So we cannot easily go left, right, divide. Meanwhile, you know, um, Breitbart went whole hog trying to, trying to do gaming content. Um, that only went kablooey because Milo went kablooey. And um, the National Post which is by Canadian standards, very right wing. This is the newspaper that gave Jordan Peterson an office. Yeah, right wing status confirmed, right? They have a gaming, um, uh, a gaming wing called Post Arcade that I have written for. Um, so you don't have to be conservative to write for them, but their parent company is pretty conservative. Um, so it's not that conservative leaning video game sites don't exist. It's just you don't make any money with with gaming. There is still not been really smart advertising initiatives so that the stuff can be profitable. Um, you know, websites are difficult enough to make money with and it, it tends to be just like AdSense clicks. Um, and I don't know why you know, uh, Alphabet, like, demonetizes left and right on YouTube, but AdSense is still, you know, people use clickbait to drive those, those uh, hits so they get the AdSense dollars and so on and so forth. It's, it's weird. It makes no sense. The, to me, the cliques are partially structural and partially ideological, but not on simple left-right lines. Because if you're the wrong kind of lefty, like me, there's also nowhere for you to go except your own channels, which quite frankly, I don't know what with the way Twitch monetization works and Patreon and all that stuff, why anybody would work for one of these sites. I mean, if you compare the quality of their like hosted video content to what you get on Twitch, Twitch is far superior in terms of personalities and, and skill in games, right? Um, so I, I'm not sure why somebody would be driving themselves crazy freelancing when it makes way more sense to just build your own channel and like partner with people who can help you get your name out there, um, you know, by participating in their stuff and, and doing um, you know, cro cross promotional stuff. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I talk about this quite a bit, but some people, there's been a lot of new people to the channel lately. So some people may not know, um, the people there is, there's very little, very little turnover in the upper echelons of games journalism these days. The people who are sort of senior positions have been there for a very long time and they're not going anywhere.
because for a while there, games journalists would jump to um, writing for video game companies, but it has become such an acrimonious relationship between the gaming websites and the publishers that 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 hasn't happened in a while as as far as i've known there there are a few people i know jump to bioware and stuff like that but um um there seems to be this sort of mutual loathing between game sites and the publishers and vice versa i i was stunned when i started talking to devs because i mean 95 percent Maybe 90%, but the vast majority of my experiences as a games reporter with game developers were positive. Um, so I was really surprised to learn that game developers either hate or are afraid of the games press in general. That, that was very surprising to me. Um, and, and increasingly as access has been cut and this, that, and the next thing, the games press more and more doesn't like the publishers either. It's very acrimonious, as I said. Um, so there hasn't been a lot of movement. So the same guys, the same names who have been around shit since I started in, oh God, it's embarrassing. Um, the first triple a game reviews I, I did sort of officially were for bioshock and halo 3 so that that lets you know how long i've been around um but so in that time period there hasn't been a ton of movement which means right people have to leave before other people can come on board and be part of decision making and they're not going anywhere now, one could claim there still should be more rank and file writers, and that's so. But my experiences with the particular people, and this is obviously not across the board, but I'm not going to name names. Um, even though these people consider themselves very left wing, there is a documented form of unconscious misogyny going on and you know i i have just been able to measure that um i'm sure that black and brown people could say similar about their their racialized experiences i'm only going based on my interactions um so i'm not saying it's it's just misogyny i would suspect that the reason you don't see um more black and brown people is for similar reasons um but let let me show you some of the markers of of misogyny and and how they're sort of at play here well my mouse dies again son of a gun um so uh i'm oh, shoot sorry guys uh zoom there we go um here so the um so I'll, I'll do the preamble this is a psychology today article i like it's from 2015 but it summarizes what misogyny looks like and what causes it what misogyny actually is it's not like i hate women it, it you'll see here in in most cases that's her starting in in most cases misogynists do not even know they hate women misogyny is typically an unconscious hatred stupid xbox controller that men form early in life often as a result of a trauma involving a female figure they trusted um an abusive or negligent mother sister teacher or girlfriend can plant a seed deep down in the brain's subcortical matter once planted the seed will germinate and begin to grow the tiny root working its way into the fear processing and memory areas of the brain as this tiny stem works its way into the frontal areas of the brain affecting emotion and rational decision making so it short circuits logic so people who what do you mean i i am a i am an ally no they they can still behave in misogynist ways and there's a a list a lot of it has to do with romantic relationships though number three uh happens in gaming in in my opinion a lot he will make pro and and there is something on female misogynists so don't worry we're gonna do men first and then women and you know uh gender non-conforming non-binary people you know, they, they fit in a spectrum between the two. So there you go. Um, he will make promises to women and often fail to keep them with men. On the other hand, he will almost always keep his word. I have found that 
among management on gaming sites. Um, his behavior towards women in general is grandiose, cocky, controlling, and self-centered. Oh, shit. Is there a lot of that? Um, I won't get into details, but um, yeah, there's a lot of that. But it's number six that rears its ugly head in gaming a lot. He is extremely competitive, especially with women. If a woman does better than him socially or professionally, he feels terrible. If a man does better, he may have mixed feelings about it, but he is able to look at the situation objectively. And this is why we don't see more women writing about video games, because the guys doing the hiring have this extremely competitive streak where they can't handle a woman knowing more about video games than them. And, you know, that's been laid at the feet of gamers by the games press a lot. But I have found that, you know, it's it's much more direct and overt uh, among, in the games press or, or it was until a few years ago when I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore and it's the same people, right? So, um, but I have found that more then rank and file gaming, I mean, the number of, of gamers who watch my stuff on Twitch and they're like, oh, wow, you blew through that boss way better than I did. Like there, there's there's a healthy competitiveness. It's not, oh, I can't admit a girl's better at games than me. So and I'm not saying I'm the greatest player in the world. I'm just saying that's happened where, you know, when I, I express an opinion strongly among some of these lefty type guys, it's huh. Or I get an I disagree completely and then 10 minutes of, you know, what would be called mansplaining by exactly those people, you know, when when you're talking over a woman, when when her opinion isn't even allowed to come out fully formed when you've already interrupted her to tell you she's wrong. And and it happens a lot with the new Lara Croft. Whenever I say I I prefer the original one and here's why, if I disagree completely, it's like, well, how can you disagree with my preference? Happens a lot. Um, and, and it does seem like they're using sort of a grandiosity to cover up insecurity. Um, and, uh, you know, then there's number seven here that he will unknowingly treat women differently from men in workplace and social settings, allowing men various liberties for which he will criticize female colleagues or friends. This happens all the time at gaming websites, especially regarding harassment. Guys are allowed to say things that are contentious that might rustle some jimmies and get people um, upset for a while. And it's like, hey, you drove traffic, but women do it. And it's like, we have to have a meeting about this. And and everybody gets really weird. And it's like, I you, you eventually start pulling your punches, or at least I did. Not because I couldn't handle the blowback on the internet, but because the guys around me, especially the guys in management, had so much trouble handling the controversy. And they'd let guys say absolutely out there contentious things, no problem. But oh God, it was this big committee that had to analyze every sentence of my writing. And I wasn't saying anything nearly as contentious as some of the guys that were on the site. It's an issue. It's a problem. And it, I don't believe, I haven't observed, this is not a belief. I have not observed gamers being uniquely, the, the, the words used, the insults used against women are different, but they don't get any less angry at women who they disagree with than men that they disagree with, it's just not remarked upon the same way by the upper echelons of the games press. When a guy, I mean, God, people are still beating on uh, uh, Dean Takahashi from Venture Beat for blowing the Cuphead tutorial, right? This isn't considered harassment, right? Just a shining example there. Um, it when when women are involved, it's treated as a very different thing. We have to work in a straitjacket. And so a lot of women either go forget this or they go on Twitch or YouTube like I did where they can do their own thing without um, without that crap. And, and this is where I start 
and I can't prove this. It's just a it's just a a vibe I get. And, um, you know, the, the, the trans women viewers of this content, um, I'm not going to speak for you here. If you want to comment on this in your own experiences, I'd really appreciate that because I don't know. It's just something I've observed. There's this odd form of trans misogyny that in the, sh it's like benevolent trans misogyny in gaming where, Male editors are not threatened by trans women having opinions on games because they don't see them as real women. So, oh, it's it's fine if a if a trans woman expresses their opinion. That doesn't hit that that uh, you know fear center in in their brains because they don't see that woman as a woman because she is transgender. And this is something that really really bothers me. And. I can't shake the feeling that it's going on. And, you know, I talk about benevolent sexism a lot. This is an example of, which is why, which is why I was like, I, you know, I can think of a half dozen trans women writing about games. I, I can't think of a single trans man. I can think of, you know, non-binary people, but not a single trans man. And um, that matters. Because on the one hand, great, trans women are getting employment. That's super important. And I don't expect any trans women to like quit in solidarity or anything like that. Please keep your job. Um, because employment can be difficult when you are trans. But that doesn't change the fact that in the long run, it is not okay to be okay with trans women writing and talking about video games passionately because you don't see them as women. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I just have my observations because none of this stuff is conscious because no one's ever going to come out and say, you know, I did this and this is where we get into intense. Sure, intense matter. But when you're not willing to be honest about yourself, about what your intents really are, that's a problem. And that's what happens with, um, you know, things like misogyny, trans misogyny, homophobia, all that stuff. Um, so that's that's something that's going to be ha have to be addressed. Uh, but let's hopefully fix this this woman problem in games journalism first. So the trans women don't lose their jobs. Um but uh, now I want to get to the other side of this is that there are also female misogynists. Yes, women who hate other women, consciously or unconsciously, consciously. Um, again, because of lousy early life experiences. I will admit that this is something I struggled with, um, especially in my teens and 20s. Um after a series of bad experiences with other girls um, throughout school, I became deeply uncomfortable hanging out with women. Um, I preferred, I, I, I always, you know, because of my interests, had a lot of male friends. But there was a period there where I didn't want to hang out with women. And, and that's, you know, when you are going, I don't trust somebody because they are female. Um that's a problem. That is a bias. And that was something I had to work through. Uh, and eventually I, the, the nice thing was because I became aware of it and was like, no, I'm going to give people chances. Um, eventually I did, um, get, you know, some really good female friends. And now like, <laughs> Uh, clearly I'm a big advocate for women and I am supportive of other women and, and, uh, all that stuff. But I had to admit that the bias was there first and that takes a lot of introspection. Uh, so female misogynist exists and, uh, this article on psychology today, the links to these articles, if you want to explore them more are in the description box of this video. I'm going to focus on the third type of female misogynist, because this is another factor in gaming and why gaming is so cliquey. Um, there, I'll, I'll go, I'll blow through the other two just for disclosure. Um, there's the misogynistic Puritan, 
who, you know, traditional women, the feminine ideal, all that stuff. Obviously, that's not the issue in gaming. Um, the misogynist self-critic is disdainful towards women who are not very feminine. Obviously, that's not what's going on here. It's the third one. The misogynistic self-loather. Um, what's the difference between a self-critic and a self-loather? Being critical of yourself does not mean you hate yourself. And if you read the description here, it pretty much encompasses a lot of feminist content related to video games. So the misogynistic self-loather, we're starting here, um, has adopted a general attitude of contempt towards every one of her own filthy kind, including herself. Again, this is unconscious, okay? Or, or subconscious. They are not aware they are doing this, but the proof is in their behavior, okay? She regards women, including herself, as promiscuous, ding, 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 manipulative, dishonest, irrational, incompetent, or unintelligent. She tends to be in denial about her own self-loathing, but not usually about her contempt for other women. And what is the big popular feminist criticism backed up by male games journalists with, as I showed, tendrils of misogyny on their own, that the women in games are dirty sluts, essentially, right? It's that they're promiscuous, they're sexualized. This, this is, this is misogynistic self-loathing. That the minute a woman dares to be a full person, a full, well-rounded person, instead of an archetype, which means having a sex urge, having sexual preferences and a willingness to act on them, all of a sudden she becomes a dirty whore because that's confirming the, self, the self-loathing misogyny in the woman making the commentary. And this is a huge problem with what I call the Dwork side. You know, the, the followers of Andrea Dworkin. I mean, Andrea Dworkin claims she was queer, even though she was married to a man. But apparently that relationship wasn't sexual. Like, Andrea Dworkin was messed up, okay? But any woman who was at all sexual, um, and this is the problem with going, she's sexualized. Well, we don't, we don't complain when men are sexualized, right? I mean, oh, Brad Pitt, you know, hot Ryu, all that stuff. No complaints there. But when women are sexualized, misogynistic self-loathing, right? And this is everywhere in games commentary. And we are in a spin cycle of this stuff because the female misogynists present the content that the male misogynists then pick up on and amplify and they shove out anyone who would offer a rational, reasonable counter to this misogynistic self-loathing perpetuated by misogynistic other-loathing because, oh, if a woman disagrees with them, she must be, what's the exact quote? Um, manipulative, dishonest, irrational, incompetent, or unintelligent, or throwing in the promiscuity, only interested in male attention. All things that I've been accused of, by the way. I get called disingenuous and manipulative all the time. And it's like, brr? Like, have you seen my content? I'm... If you see me interact on Twitch, you see how freaking gullible I am. Um, so this is this is just, you know, e either performative misogyny or misogynistic self-loathing on, on behalf of the people projecting these tendencies. But this is a real thing. The cliques are never going to end until the people in charge confront these issues in themselves and not just men, right? Not just men. Everybody knows this, this woman who gravitates towards um, male-dominated uh, pastimes because they're uncomfortable with other women. The one thing I never did, maybe because I sort of had this self-awareness, was gatekeep to keep any other woman out. I always... I. I enjoyed when there were, I, I always liked the, like, the booth babes. I like talking to the booth babes because it was like, um, all right, 
you know, here's somebody else I can talk to about how hard the floors are on my feet. Now, by that point, I was already sort of coming out of the, the you know, the self-loathing misogyny of my youth. Um, but, um, or probably self-critical was more me. Uh, no, it could be self-loathing too. Anyway, I'm going back and forth. See? Manipulative? Uh, no inside voice. Um, but, you know... I always enjoyed there being other women in the room. Other women can't stand it because they want all the attention to be on them. They cannot handle it because they've got that marker of misogyny where they can't handle any competitiveness with other women. And like I said, I'm sure this would could similarly be applied to issues of race and get very similar responses. I've seen, um, I've seen it happen on Twitter and in comment sections where, when uh, a person of a, a black or brown person specifically uh, doesn't respond in the way they're supposed to, uh, they get ganged up on. Uh, I've also seen, um, I've seen some really nasty stuff happen to. Uh, Asian Asian friends of mine and the stereotypes that people think are okay to enforce on Asian people are pretty crazy considering how many Asian people design games. Uh, maybe there's a, a, a difference between, um, you know, uh, companies, you know, Asian companies and, and, People who were born in Canada or U.S. who are basically of Asian descent. I don't know. I can't speak to that. But I have seen really not cool stuff perpetrated. And, and sometimes it, it kind of doesn't bother them. Sometimes it very much bothers them. Um, and to be clear, I'm not looking to be offended on anyone's behalf. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes when I talk to them, they admit it does bother them, but what are they supposed to do about it? Um, again, I am not saying that any experience of my own, but my own, is absolutely with certainty. I just know what I've seen, and I don't believe that there's a unique problem with women in the games press. I think there's an issue with just self-loathing in the games press because not all gamers are nerds and not all nerds are gamers, but let's face it, there's a very large overlap in that Venn diagram, right? And one of the things nerds struggle with is self-loathing because again, childhood trauma. And that's a very real thing that is at the core of, I think, these other bad behaviors. And the only way to get past this is for these, these editors, these managers at these gaming sites to be more willing to be challenged. But because they're so insecure, not just in, and of, in themselves, but in their like employment security, they can't do that. And that, that's why I, I have issues with tenuous employment situations in any industry, but especially creative industries. Uh, despite what business school, some business schools will tell you, creatives do not work well when they're afraid they're going to get fired. You know, there's, there's accountability and then there's sheer terror and they're not the same thing. So there's cleanup that needs to be done. And I, uh, Unless there's a huge Me Too scandal, I don't think it's going to come from within. What's going to end up happening is that eventually major, um, you know, major media outlets, the, the American broadcasters, you know, the web wings of NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, etc., will start covering video games the way they cover movies. Um New, the successful newspapers that stay alive will car start covering games the way they cover movies and TV shows and all that stuff, though. Entertainment reporting in general is circling the bowl right now. Um, it'll rebound eventually, I think, maybe. Or new services will come up 
And I think perhaps maybe services like Twitch are those services. Because the wonderful thing about Twitch is it's live, right? It's you. You're focusing on a game. You don't have the ability to cognitive overload because you're going to fuck up. At least the games I play are too difficult to to be manipulative and disingenuous. You know, it's like you can't think up a lie when you're doing like a Cuphead or a Hollow Knight boss. It's just too hard. Your Your cognitive processes are too engaged in that. And so... I, I I do do a lot of immature stuff. I admit that, um, partially because I'm I'm having fun. Um, but you know what you get is that person, and I think that's what makes it so compelling. It's the authenticity that when somebody's a really good player, it's just a joy to watch. But um, there's a heavy chat component, like back and forth dialogue and stuff like that. Um, on my channel and if somebody can have their focus split that much during fairly difficult games and still manage to craft falsehoods you are clearly a superior intellect to mine I have no idea how someone would do that and I think it, it is that you're getting the real person warts and all you know, you may not like elements of that person, but at least you can believe it really is that person, that it's not some sort of contrivance or artifice. And I think people are are craving that in an era of hot takes and, um, like I said, artifice, image, like these carefully crafted personal brands. People just want to see people cut loose and be themselves. Because when you're around people who are willing to be themselves, that gives you the confidence to be yourself too. The best way to learn how to make a mistake is to hang around people who are comfortable and yet accountable with making mistakes. And we certainly don't see that from many corners of the games press, do we? So... That, um, that was a long video, but it took that long to get out because I, I wanted to be clear on the subject. Obviously, I care about this stuff very much because I do think that we would be better served by communities devoted to gaming that these websites could be that are enthusiast communities. You know, instead of having to rely on word of mouth to find games you like, people who aren't connected to those sort of social circles could seek out like-minded people through these services, ideally. And then there's some reporting and stuff like that on the side. That can only happen, though, if the people call in the shots at, at the um, at the highest levels and middle management are self-confident enough to handle disagreement and dissent and differences of opinion, people coming from very different places. Because if you can't handle that, it doesn't matter how a person sees the world differently from you. You're going to be threatened by that difference. So you can think you're not racist and not sexist and not homophobic and not transphobic all you want. If you're painfully insecure, anyone who's not like you, anyone who's not the way you perceive yourself or anybody that threatens that perception of self is going to cause that that deep brain fear response in you. So yeah, you are behaving in ways you believe are not good. So be self-aware and change it. All right, this is really weird to like shill for Patreon after this, but I got to do it. Capitalism helps support this channel. Become a monthly patron. If you like balls to the wall con con uh, content like this, please support me on Patreon. Um, I'm sure I will take huge shit for this, but I don't care. I might even skip Feedback Friday on this video. I don't know. Just let people vent if they get really, really angry. Sometimes that's better, but um, hopefully not. Hopefully the criticism will be, you know, rational enough to engage with. All right. Thanks for watching.